Hi, good day everyone. So I am Janice and this is Hailey. So the Sun Moon Foundation is a, a non-profit entity whose goals are really to give people a practical understanding of different agricultural methods and ways in which they can be more sustainable in their garden at home or in a community setting as we are in here. We're going to take you through the hydroponic module. Right, so a quick tour of our hydroponic system. We start out our reservoir. This area is where you would put your nutrient rich water to be circulated into your system. We have a half horsepower inline pump that would take the nutrient rich water and circulate it via our delivery system to our beds. So from our pump, we'd have our pump plugged into a timer at its source. A timer would allow the pump to know when to come on. So you could program your timer, which would give the pump electricity at specific times during the day. Um, these times may vary as in the amount of time and also the duration of time at which your plants are watered. So for example, in the dry season, you would have your pump turning on to wet your plants more frequently than in the height of the rainy season. From our pump, we have what we call our delivery system, which is a network of plumbing, inclusive of a filter that goes to our beds with valves along the way to control the amount of water that is done. This feature, where our plumbing goes back into the reservoir, is to allow oxygenation of the water in the system. Our delivery system comes to the starting points of each bed where it is converted into drip hoses. This drip hose is designed with a hole at 12 inches, 12 inch interval where water will be seeped into your medium to nourish your roots with nutrient-rich water. Our beds are made of four inch PVC pipes with custom cuts to allow access and upward growth of your plant. Because it is a drip to waste system, at the bottom of your beds will have holes at two feet intervals to allow the gradual drip away of excess moisture. It is important when installing and building your system to be aware of the surface that you're putting it on so that your table is level and also the perspective of the sunlight arc. At the end of each bed or pipe, we've installed which can be removed and replaced in order to do system maintenance. This is our system, it's very basic and that concludes our tour. Let us now review the main components of the hydroponic system. The sump. This is a blue 55 gallon barrel which stores the nutrient mix until needed by the hydroponic system. The pump. This 0.5 horsepower inline pump used to transfer material from the sump to the hydroponic system pushes water to a height of 3.5 feet, a user-friendly waist height for most persons. The timer. The pump is connected to a timer which turns on the pump at a predetermined time, frequency and duration. This ensures water and nutrients are used efficiently by the system. The filter. The filter removes any debris or undissolved nutrient crystals before passing the nutrient rich water into the hydroponic pipes. Valves. Valves are used throughout the system to regulate water flow. Most of them used in this system are ball valves. 
Drip line. This is a half inch in diameter tubing that runs the length of the hydroponic pipe. It is pierced at 12 inch intervals with holes from which the nutrient rich water enters the soil medium to feed the plant. It is clamped at the end. Normally the holes face upward ensuring that the drip line is filled before each hole overflows into the soil mix. PVC pipes and clamps. This system uses 4 inches in diameter PVC lines with a customized cut at the top. These PVC pipes are a standard hardware length of 19 feet long. They are held in place by 4 inch PVC clamps. The table. This table is made from sea purlin and is used to support the hydroponic pipes, which can get quite heavy with the soil mix, the water and the growing plants. The concrete boot. This boot aids in preventing the purlin from sinking into the soil by providing a larger surface area. The end cap. This screw cap placed at the end of each hydroponic pipe can be removed for maintenance of the pipes between production cycles. This represents the end of the review of the main components of our hydroponic system. Now we will move to some more operational aspects. The first operational aspect we will observe is that of the various nutrients used to support plant growth in the hydroponic system. Janice will give us some more information on this. The hydroponic system is off the ground, we're not using soil. Ideally, we would have to, of course, add nutrients to the system for our plants to grow. So, some of the important nutrients that we use, we have what we call master blend, which consists of nitrogen as well as magnesium, some trace elements of boron and molybdenum. We have magnesium sulfate and we have calcium nitrate. Calcium is important for your plants as it helps with the maintenance of your cell wall, which of course is the barrier where nutrients and stuff flow through. The magnesium sulfate, magnesium is important as it helps the plants root and it's also an important component of your chlorophyll, which of course your plants need to photosynthesize. So together we mix them in a 2 one, one ratio. Firstly, we usually add a 120 grams master blend. Add to that 60 grams of your magnesium sulfate. And because of the solubility of these salts in water, you usually mix any master blend and your magnesium sulfate first. Once that is blended in, we will add your 60 grams of um, calcium nitrate. So this is what your final solution would look like. You can see it's a nice rich color. And this will be added into your reservoir and passed through the system and your plants will utilize what they need. Thank you, Janice. So in review, the soils contained in a typical nutrient mix of a hydroponic system producing green leafy plants would contain 120 grams of master blend, which is a combination of NPK salts, 60 grams of magnesium sulfate, and 60 grams of calcium nitrate in a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. There must be some way though to verify whether we are feeding our plants sufficient nutrients. Let us tune in to Hailey and Janice for more information on this. In growing hydroponically, you need to have testing equipment. We test for turbidity, electrical conductivity and pH. 
So what I have here is a pH tester, which is very easy to use. You would take a test sample from the water in your reservoir and you would turn on your meter and place it in the water. Once you place it in your water, you would now get a reading which you could record and make steps to adjust if it isn't optimum. In the plants that we are actually planting, a pH balance of between 5.5 to 7.5 is desirable because of the range of plants that we actually do, which is lettuce, pak choy, celery, shadon benny. We also have the TDS meter and the trickle conductivity meter, which would also test your solution. So from the same sample, you would di dip the node end into your water, hold it, and it would give you a reading. Now based on which indicator you're reading, you would get, you'd get different qualities. So when you're reading for totally dissolved solids, that would be measured in parts per million, and the required amounts would be varying based on the plants that you're planting. For example, it's okay. You can find this information on the internet. So, as it relates to testing, these two meters are very adequate to give you a fair idea of the nutrient uptake of your plants and how to keep your solution within the right range so your plants can benefit from your mix. Thank you highly and Janice. Now that we have a fair idea on what nutrients are used in the hydroponic system and what equipment is used to test them, we can now move on to the medium used to support the plants as they grow. Note that this hydroponic system is a little bit different to your standard vision. Let us check in with Janice to see in what way. So this is our final mix. You would use 60% of your cocoa peat. 30% of your vermiculite and then 10% of your perlite. We mix all of these in and then we will add it to our system. You want to make sure your medium is moist as well when you're packing it in. Now that you have your bed space prepared and packed properly, you want to overcompensate the amount of material you're putting in. You don't want to compact it, but you just want to put as much as you could because you don't want it to reduce too much when gravity has its action on it. So, as you'd see, Janice is planting it out here. And be mindful of the spacing that you would use. Indeed. With a mixture of 60% cocoa peat, 30% vermicompost, and 10% perlite, you're well on your way to growing some mighty fine green leafies. Note that the cocoa peat, a byproduct of coconut husk, is used to anchor the plant, while the vermicompost, a product of decomposition of organic matter by earthworms, is used to add up dash more organic nutrients. And finally, perlite, volcanic glass with a relatively high water content, is used for drainage. With our seedlings now in the hydroponic system, let's see what it takes to get them to harvest. So it's four to six weeks for maturity, right? So on, at that point in time, you'll be able to harvest an entire lettuce or a pak choy, as well as your parsley. Um, you know, shadow benny, you could either take out the whole plant or you could clip off some of the leaves. And our hydroponic system is different to growing in soil because we have an elevated system. So a lot of these pests that you might find on the ground, you won't encounter on a hydroponic system. However, there is the occurrence of other things like aphids and mealybugs, which could be, could be c carried in the air and therefore land on your leaves and cause issues. So in our system, we try to take as much of an organic approach as possible and we would use biopesticides such as garlic oil or neem oil or cinnamon which are known to deter these pests.
Wow, that's great to hear, Janice. With a four to six week growth time and hungry insects, it is good to know that there are organic solutions such as the use of cinnamon, garlic, and pepper sprays. Just one more thing to know now, I suppose. How do we maintain the system? Let's check in with Hailey. So, your system would need maintenance, which would usually happen in between your crops. Apart from the cyclic maintenance of wetting and changing your reservoir water and adding nutrients, at the end of every cycle, it is recommended that you take out all of the medium from your bed and sanitize your bed spaces, as in the pipes, with chlorine water solution. solution. Uh, it is advised that you take down your reservoir after every two cycles and completely flush it out and wash it. Apart from that, your system is pretty maintenance free because of the components that put it together. Sounds pretty easy, Hailey. Thanks for that. Nothing left to do now except... So that concludes our class. Thanks for coming out, thanks for watching, thanks for paying attention. Uh, stay tuned to our Facebook pages and Instagram pages. We have a weekly live program on Instagram and Facebook uh, every Sunday from 1.30 to 3 o'clock where we talk about agriculture and other food security related topics. Subscribe so that you will get the notifications for when things are happening. Stay tuned because we might be coming out with a summer camp where you'll be able to learn even more about food production as well as robot production, earth building or using recyclable items to create garden pieces that you can make at home during the vacation time when school is closed. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope you, we hope you learned a lot. I will go live with you in a few to answer any questions you may have about the system its design and or its operations. See you soon.